In the days right after Tropical Storm Irene, many in Rutland were picking up the pieces. The storm dumped torrents of rain and caused millions of dollars in property damage. The community was also in mourning. Seven Vermonters died, including a father and son who were swept away by the raging floodwaters. 55-year-old Mike Garifano, head of Rutland City's water department, was out that day assessing the damage. His 24-year-old son, Michael, was with him. As VPR's Nina Keck reports, the father and son's legacy looms large in Rutland, even a decade after the storm. I asked Tom Garifano how people kept the two Mikes in his family straight. You know, like growing up, it was always Big Mike and Little Mike. Little Mike was Tom's baby brother. They were six years apart. Big Mike was Tom's dad. He managed Rutland City's drinking water for 30 years. He was a good guy, gruff, um, sarcastic. Tom uses the word curmudgeon (laughs) lovingly. And he'd push you to work harder, and you'd push him not to be so serious. Um, And a lot of people respected him, whether they agreed with him or not. Tom followed in his father's footsteps and also works in the city's water department. He says to his dad, it was always more than just a job. (laughs) I get kind of choked up because it's what I think of it as, too. Um, It becomes your life. Rutland's drinking water comes from a large watershed that feeds into nearby Menden Brook, Water from the brook is treated and stored in a 90 million gallon reservoir system. Ten years ago, rains from Irene flooded Menden Brook. It surged over its banks. Neighbors say it roared like a jet engine and looked like Niagara Falls. What do you know about what your dad and your brother were doing the day they died? Uh, to the best of my recollection, th- my dad was told by the fire department that the inlet building may have been washed out or underwater. This was bad because it meant dirty flood water and runoff from a nearby sewer pipe might be getting into the city's drinking water. Tom says his dad would have wanted to assess that with his own eyes. At the end of the day, it's his responsibility, the whole system. People who knew Mike Garifano say his wife Sally and his three boys meant everything to him. Tom says the family was close, which might explain why young Mike was with his father that day. You just did things together. Um, my little brother was living at home, so, oh, Dad, you're going to go for a ride, I'll go with you. Dick Kilburn saw the two Garifanos that day. He lives near Menden Brook and was shocked at the force of the water. So I walked up, and I just could not believe the devastation. Trees, rocks, boulders. Kilburn says he knew Mike Garifano well and walked with the father and son as they checked out the damage. He says he headed back home just before the two men died. Were you afraid when you were standing washing water? I had no fear whatsoever. And I know Mike had no fear. If Mike was afraid of where he was standing, he wouldn't have been there. No one knows for certain what happened that day. Tom Garifano says from what the state police told him after investigating the scene with dogs, his dad and brother were standing well away from the water, on land they thought was secure. Where we believe they were was a couple hundred yards from the actual inlet, um, quite high above the river and far away from the river and the water. But the land is sandy, and that day it was saturated by rain and gave way. The elder Mike Garifano's body was found the next day, but it took authorities more than three weeks to find young Mike. I I still didn't believe it until they found the body, that, you know, he was gone. Just so tragic. John Ojala is the general manager at Proctor Pittsford Country Club, where young Mike had worked for eight years. He says the 24-year-old loved nature and had studied horticulture and landscape at Vermont Technical College. Kirk Abrahamson, golf course superintendent, hoped one day Mike would take over his job. He'd coached all three Garifano boys in high school and says Mike was hardworking, kind, sincere, and like a son. I still have, uh, like, I call him Mikey Moments. It's just a great kid. Abrahamson says what's so tragic for the Garifano family beyond what happened during Irene is that their middle son, Robbie, had died in an accident just 16 months earlier. 
Abrahamson wipes his eyes and takes me to a part of the golf course where young Mike Garifano's imprint lives on. It's a flower garden near hole 10 that's awash in yellows and blues. In front of all the blossoms is a white marble bench with Michael's name on it. Mike's mom does all the flowers. She comes here every spring. It's beautiful. Yep. Do you ever come up here and think about him? I sit here all the time. I have a bad day. It's uh, it's a beautiful spot to sit. Vivian and George Gulick never knew Mike Garifano or his son Michael, but the couple who live near Mendenbrook, not far from where the two men died, say they think of them often. Whenever we talk about Irene, that's what we remember. I mean, yes, the roads collapsed and it was horrific and cemeteries got flooded and people were without water and our kids had to hike through the woods to go to school. Not, that, not to diminish everything else that happened, but that, that's, what is, that's what Irene will always be for us, is that a father and son lost their lives. We don't always appreciate the public service people who make our cities and towns work in Vermont, they tell me. Now we do. For VPR News... I'm Nina Kack.